We're jumping into this second half of 2 Timothy chapter 1. The sermon I preached from this section I called, Join With Me. The big theme that we see in the whole of 2 Timothy is this idea of Paul calling Timothy to finish the work of proclaiming Christ by continuing in the truth as he endures suffering all in view of the life to come. And we see some of these key themes emerging from this passage. But before I take us through the passage, I really do encourage you, as always, to take some time to read this passage a few times for yourself and spend some time praying that God would open your eyes to see and understand these glorious truths about him. If you are new to this channel, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and share it with others who you think might find this helpful. So flowing from this big theme of the whole book, uh, we see a whole lot about continuing in the truth. And Paul speaks about this truth in a number of ways. He speaks about it uh, as the testimony about our Lord. He speaks about it as the gospel, which he does a few times in this section. And then he reminds Timothy of what he heard uh, from Paul himself. And this is the truth, the whole truth, as Paul has taught it to him. He calls it sound teaching and the good deposits. And that's what Paul wants Timothy to continue in. And the key thing that he's calling Timothy to do in this passage is to join with him in suffering. So this enduring suffering theme, uh, this is the big uh, key verb in this whole section. And we'll see the same verb being used in chapter 2 verse 3 when we get there in the next video. And this idea of suffering comes out in a number of ways. We see that Paul himself was a prisoner. He speaks of his own suffering. Uh, he speaks of those who have deserted him and of his chains. And this idea of him being a prisoner because of the gospel and in chains because of the gospel, we'll see is one of the things that was causing people to be ashamed of him. But not only does he point to these things, that the truth that Timothy needs to continue in, not only does he call him to join with him in suffering, enduring this suffering, but again, he points him to the life to come. And he does that here by speaking of this life and immortality that have been brought to light through the gospel. He, he is convinced that the Lord will keep him, guard him and guard this truth until that day, that great day when he meets him in glory. And then he speaks about that day again as he's talking about Onesiphorus at the end of this section. Now, a really helpful tool to look for while you're going through uh, any of the letters of the New Testament is to look for imperatives. So an imperative is a key verb that is a command. It is imperative that you listen to this. And this is the key imperative in this section, uh, the whole section revolves around this imperative to join with Paul in suffering, uh, but there are other imperatives here. And paying attention to the imperatives in the letter just helps you to get a sense of the big thrust, the big idea of what's going on in any given passage. And here we see this key imperative, join with me in suffering, keep the pattern of sound teaching, guard the good deposits. And the key thing that we'll see emerges from this whole section is that we will only be willing to join in suffering for the gospel as we proclaim the gospel, as we play our part in guarding the gospel, if we are not ashamed of the gospel. So we will only be willing to suffer for the gospel as we play our part in guarding the gospel if we are not ashamed of the gospel. And we see this idea of not being ashamed. Paul starts, he says, do not be ashamed. And then he says, and this is no cause for shame. Or in another translation, it says, I am not ashamed. And in the last part, we see that Onesiphorus was not ashamed. So that's a key theme that emerges in this section. 
But we also see that a key part of what he is not ashamed of is the testimony about our Lord. So the Lord Jesus Christ is in the spotlight throughout this section. Uh, our Savior, Christ Jesus. He is the one who will guard what he has entrusted to Paul. But as we pay attention to this very first imperative here, uh, the whole flow helps us. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. So there were people who were ashamed of Paul because he was in prison. He was in chains because of his proclamation about Jesus. He was doing this work of proclaiming Christ. And because he was doing that work, he was suffering. He was in prison and people were ashamed of him. And as a result of being ashamed of him, they were ashamed about this truth about our Lord, the testimony of our Lord. And Paul is saying, no, don't be ashamed. And this is the good news that brings salvation, which we saw in 1 Timothy. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And he's saying, so don't be ashamed. Rather, join me in suffering for the gospel. But he gives this important qualification by the power of God. We aren't called to suffer for the gospel in our own strength. Actually, God is the one who empowers us. And we see here where he called Paul to, uh, Timothy to guard the good deposit. He says, guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. We don't guard the gospel or suffer for the gospel in our own strength. We do it with God's enabling power. And this is not small power. The Greek word that we see there is the word dunamis, from which we get our English word dynamite. This is a, a big power of God that is at work, helping us to do the work that we've been called to do. And we see here that he says God is able. Uh, that word is also linked with this dynamite word. So God is powerfully able. God is powerfully able to guard the gospel. And so we see this repetition of guarding the gospel, guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit, and God will guard what has been entrusted uh, to Paul. God will guard his gospel. And a key way in which God guards this gospel is as his people keep the pattern of sound teaching and continue to finish this work of proclaiming Christ. That's how we guard the gospel. We continue to proclaim Christ as we continue in the truth, even as we endure suffering, all in view of the life to come. We are therefore guarding this good deposit. And this word, a uh, good deposit, has the sense of uh, the whole, uh, the gospel in its fullest sense, the entire content of the Christian faith. This good deposit that's been handed down, what you heard from me. So Paul has taught Timothy uh, the whole truth that he needs to know that is all about Christ Jesus. And he's saying, guard it. Guard that good deposit. Continue to teach God's truth in all its fullness. This is truth that we don't need to be ashamed of. And in verses 9 and 10 here, uh, Paul reminds Timothy of exactly why he doesn't need to be ashamed. Because by the power of God, the God who saved us. God has done the work through Jesus of saving a people for himself. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. God has saved us. He's done all the work. He's called us. And he's called us not because of anything we've done, not because of our own works, but only because of his amazing grace. That grace has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, who has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. God, our Savior has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. So, as Paul says, join with me in suffering for the gospel, he then reminds of the wonder of this gospel. It's a gospel of salvation, a gospel of being called to be God's people, not because of anything we've done, but all because of God's grace to us. 
that was given in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. We were chosen before time began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus. And this salvation has been absolutely secured because Jesus has destroyed death and he's brought life and immortality to light. That's why Paul, as a prisoner in chains, could continue this work with such confidence because he knew that even though he was on death row, death had been destroyed by Jesus and immortality was now his. He knew that one day his mortal life would give way to immortality. And so he was willing to suffer as he spoke about King Jesus, this glorious gospel of salvation, because he knew that this life was not all there is. This mortal life would give way to immortality. And this gospel of salvation and eternal life is the gospel that he was appointed as a herald and an apostle and a teacher of. And then he says, that's why I'm suffering. It's because he has been proclaiming Christ that he is now suffering. He's suffering because he wants the world to know this Jesus who saved us and called us and has secured eternal life for us. And he says, well, I'm suffering, but I'm not ashamed because I know this Savior whom I've believed. I'm convinced that he is able to guard the gospel even if I, my life ends this good news of salvation and immortal life will be guarded by him until that day when those who have been saved are with him in life eternal. And so he says to Timothy, join with me in suffering. What you've heard from me, keep. Don't change it. Stick to the truth that I have taught you and keep teaching it to others. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, I love how in the end of this section, uh, Paul gives very practical examples. He, he speaks of those who have deserted him. Uh, he says, everyone in the province of Asia has deserted me. So there were those, sadly, who were ashamed of Paul, the prisoner. And he's saying, you don't want to be counted alongside Philegius and Hermogenes who have deserted me. You want to be counted alongside people like Onesiphorus. Because he was not ashamed. He was refreshing to Paul. Now we don't know the details of exactly uh, who this guy was and what he did. But we do know here that he searched hard until he found Paul. And he refreshed him in some way. And here we see he helped Paul in many ways. In how many ways he helped me while I was in Ephesus. So Paul holds up this guy, Onesiphorus. And I think that's a wonderful thing. That it shows that there are... There's a part to play in this gospel work, not just for Paul, the prisoner, not just for Timothy, the one who is continue with, to continue with the sound teaching, but ordinary Christians like Onesiphorus, who played his part because he wasn't ashamed of the gospel, and he played his part in helping Paul to see this gospel proclaimed. Onesiphorus continued in the truth, he endured suffering as he searched for Paul the prisoner. That would have uh, brought shame in an earthly sense on him, but he wasn't ashamed of the gospel because he knew that this gospel is powerful. And so he helped Paul to make sure that this work of proclaiming Christ would continue. And he did that because he knew that life and immortality had been brought to life through Jesus, the Savior who conquered death. And we can all learn from Onesiphorus. There's a part to play for each of us in God's work. But we will only be willing to join in suffering for this gospel as we play our part in guarding the gospel if we are not ashamed of the gospel. And we don't need to be ashamed because it is good news of a Savior who has called us and secured eternal life for us. So let's all get in line. Let us all join with Paul Let's join with Timothy. Let's join with those who throughout the centuries have continued with this work as we play our part in finishing this work of proclaiming Christ until that day when we are with him forever. It really is a glorious section to dig into. So I encourage you to continue to meditate on these truths. And then as you teach them to others, I pray that God, by his 
powerful spirit would do the work of reminding us of these truths so that we will do the work that he's called us to do. Well, God bless as you dig in further.